Today on the DML News Podcast, I'm filling in for DML and Ryan's here with me. We have a few stories here that I think are pretty critical to get to. We're going to talk about uh, Tony Bobulinski's testimony yesterday. We're going to speak about AOC cutting him off during the testimony. More squatter stories and then a very, very interesting story that you're not going to want to miss towards the end of the show regarding Neuralink. And it's kind of breathtaking. So get ready. It's all unfiltered. Dennis Michael Lynch gives you his word and he will never let you down. He will always fight for America. The only one who really puts his money where his mouth is, is Dennis Michael Lynch. Hey everybody, it's Denny here and I have Ryan on the controls with me. We're filling in for DML today. He's uh, currently traveling right now, which is going to be relative to his upcoming Wine and Talk video. Uh, him and Miss Mary are going away with some friends. I won't give more details to that because I want I want them to save it for uh, their next Wine and Talk episode. Uh, but the two of us, we're here today. Uh, we got some very interesting stories. And of course, before we get into it, which if you've been watching the last few episodes or if you're new here, uh, our show now premieres on Facebook for a first partial half. And then if you want the rest of the show where we get some uh, more meat on the bones for some of the stories that we can't cover in the first half, you're going to have to become a Team DML member, which if you want to become one, just got to go to teamdml.com slash join, uh, sign up. It is so worth it. I absolutely love the Team DML community. Our live chat is honestly hysterically funny sometimes. And truthfully, too, we just learn more about some stories going on nationally and with our members through that chat and just through... Uh, our direct messaging system. So if you want, you know, nice community of communication, uh, a nice community of people that really care about you, and then also just maybe some exclusive announcements on some deals, that's the place to go. Now, in kind of incorporating here with the deals, I won't get too much into it, especially if you have been watching all week, but we are having one of our biggest DML CBD BOGO sales that we've ever had. A reason for this is because we are kind of changing our style and method with the BOGOs going forward. I mean, in short, truthfully, we won't really be doing them. We're going to be kind of doing another method of how we're going to deliver our really top tier products to you. Um, more details will be rolled out in the next coming months regarding that. But until then, just to kind of cover that gap, you're going to want to take advantage of this sale. I mean, I could tell you already. The 6.7 pain relief body oil, we're really low on inventory there. That's going quick. Our uh, CBD soft gels, those are also going quick. We've started going very quick on our DML CBD gummies as well. Uh, so I would urge you get in there and load up. I mean, one product I think definitely to jump onto is the D, uh, DML CBD pet tincture. You can't see it right now, but I have Robin over on the couch. Uh, he's snoozing away. Um, without going too detailed into it, he's been dealing with some uh, medical issues, nothing chronically crazy, but just uh, some stuff going on with his eyes that I've actually been kind of helping him with by giving him the pet tincture, just a little droplet every single day, and he's been doing a lot better. I mean, he used to have kind of crusties around his eyes, and now they're nice and visual and clear. You're, so You're not putting it in his eyes. Yeah, Ryan wanted me to clarify. I am not putting his tincture in his eyes. No. <laughs> For a second there, I was like, oh my gosh, I hope I really don't uh, confuse the audience here. No, uh, usually the way I, I do it with Robin, in case you're wondering if, if you have a dog at home, or a cat, by the way, because my friend's cat uses it all the time, uh, I will either do it direct because he's a tough dog and he'll do it. I mean, it's not that it's a bad taste. It's just that if we're on the go, I'll just do a little uh, drop into his mouth. Or if we're at home, I will actually put it onto his treat and give him the treat. He eats it right up. No issues there. So um, honestly, if you're looking to uh, start covering that gap, because this really will be one of our last BOGOs, I think we're going to probably maybe have a buy one, get one in the summer, likely closer to uh, DML's birthday, which is around August. I can't guarantee that, but this is our big one. So you're going to want to jump on it. Uh, all the products are for, for BOGO, so definitely take advantage of that. Now let's get into the show. Ryan, I'm sure you've seen it because uh, we kind of discussed about it before we started today. Tony Bobulinski, the man who was the business associate to Joe, uh, sorry, to Hunter Biden, 
uh, regarding their business dealings. He testified before the House Oversight Committee, and he basically got to give it to this guy. It is not easy going against the Biden family. We have seen that continuously, whether it's the Robert Hur report, whether it's people uh, that worked for the CIA that were whistleblowers, and then all of a sudden, next thing you know, they're uh, called liars. Everything that's been hit at this family for some of the things they've been doing, it just seems like it either gets scapegoated or rubbed on, or uh, pushed under the rug. And yet Bobulinski is there calling out uh, specifically representatives Jamie Raskin and Dan Goldman, calling them liars because they know, as many uh, Americans and politicians in D.C. know, um, the Bidens were definitely involved in some shady deals and business dealings that are unbecoming of people that are held in office. So here is a two-minute clip of Bobulinski's testimony yesterday where he calls out Raskin and Goldman uh, very boldly, and it kind of uh, gets a little bit chaotic. So I'm going to have Ryan play that clip for you. At the same people preaching this mantra no better. They continue to lie directly to the American people without hesitation and remorse. Rep. Dan Goldman and Jamie Raskin, both lawyers, and Mr. Goldman, a former prosecutor with the SDNY from New York, will continue to lie today in this hearing and then go straight to the media to tell more lies. Hunter Biden's defense attorney, Abby Lowell, weaponized his letters to Congress to try to smear my name Mr. and Chairman. state the cold hard facts M Mr. Chairman. in an attempt to save his powerfully connected client Wait. and his father. I challenge Mr. Lowell to make those claims on national television so he can be held accountable for his lies. Prior to my successful business career, I was an officer in the United States Navy. At Navy's elite Naval Nuclear Power Training Command, I later served as the, chief's, uh, the command's chief technology officer. Please proceed. I apologize for the disruption from the... Okay. Am I supposed to say it's my time, Mr. Raskin? Yeah. But please, Mr. Bobulinski, please. Okay. Come to order. Uh, Mr. Bobulinski, Mr. Bobulinski, please okay. proceed. Okay. Please proceed. I apologize for the disruption from the minority. Okay. Can well, Mr. Chairman, if it save his time, but he called members of this committee liars, and I just want to know whether the order and decorum requirements of House Rule 11 apply to witnesses appearing before the committee. Uh, do, do the, does it apply or does it not? Should I, Should I address? I, I don't. There's hard light. There's decorum from the members. We've asked for that. There's no language that I'm aware of pertaining to a witness. Yeah. Thank you. So, so uh, don't uh, make sure we didn't uh, waste any of his time on the opening statement. Mr. Bobulinski, I'm sorry for the disruption. Please continue your opening yeah, statement. I think uh, you, Mr. Raskin, used we'll, we'll make sure it's right. We'll oh, make okay, sure it's right. great. I just want to restate, uh, make sure the American people hear all these facts. Abby Lowell. Yeah, Bobulinski came out swinging. And I just want to read this quote here from the National Review regarding that testimony yesterday before I play our next video, which I think is just very representative of our current representatives, specifically AOC. Throughout the hearing, Bobulinski accused Hunter and James Biden of lying under oath about their business dealings with Chinese energy conglomerate CEFC. Joe Biden Hunter Biden and, James, and James Biden met Bobulinski at the Milken Institute Conference for roughly 45 minutes in May 2017 because of Bobulinski's role in the CFC, CEFC negotiations, which he said repeatedly during his testimony yesterday. The details about Bobulinski, uh, the details Bobulinski gave about the meeting are nearly identical to the closed door testimony he provided behind closed doors last month. Republican lawmakers shared multiple text messages and emails from Bobulinski's old BlackBerry phone corroborating his testimony. In addition, Bobulinski asserted Joe Biden was, quote-unquote, the big guy, brought up by business partner James Gillier in an email about the ownership structure of the CEFC venture. Without going really deep into the timeline of these business dealings, Let's just go with the concept here that this is a man, meaning Bobulinski, 
who has substantial evidence through text message, through email, through documents, through, uh, as I just stated, a prior testimony and then given a public testimony, pretty much the identical story. There is a, um, how would you call it, a roster of evidence that what was going on with Biden and this Chinese affiliated company is very clearly representative of undermining the law, let's say. And I don't know how you get more clear than that when you compare it to, uh, let's say, RICO cases such as Trump and uh, what was also hit with Rudy Giuliani in Georgia. And yet with all this evidence, we still have Democrats almost not even turning a blind eye, just shining their very visual eye and calling out blindness. And what I mean by that is that AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, representative of New York, questioned Bob Alinsky, or I should say uh, attempted to reprimand him or lecture him is probably the better way to put it, uh, claiming that you know Bob Alinsky's testimony or eyewitness account uh, really shouldn't be considerate or, or considerable or I should say legitimate because actually there really is no because. I mean, he literally lays out what the crimes were. I mean, it all falls under RICO. And yet she just almost stubbornly just doesn't even want to acknowledge it. I want to play this clip if you already haven't seen it. It's AOC questioning if he was a uh, witness to crimes committed. And before Bob Alinsky can even get maybe out, I don't know, 10 words of trying to explain what he saw and what he witnessed, uh, she just continuously interrupts him, claiming that, you know, uh, RICO isn't a crime, that it's a concept or just some kind of spewing BS that she typically does during these testimonies. And before Bob Alinsky can even get into more detail as to the layers of the crime, she does the classic, I reclaim my time. So here is that video. Brian's going to play it for you. Is it your testimony today that you personally witnessed President Joe Biden commit a crime? I believe the fact that he was sitting with me while I was putting together. A Did you deal. witness the president commit it, it, a crime? Is it your testimony today? Yes. And what crime do you have you witnessed? How much time do I have to go through it? It is simple. You name the crime. Uh, Did you watch him steal something? Cor corruption statutes, RICO and conspiracy. What is it? What is, are, uh, what is the crime, sir? You, you specifically you, just, uh, you keep up. Uh, you asked me to answer the question. I answered the question. No, Rico, you're obviously not familiar with corruption. Excuse statute. me, sir. Excuse Mara. me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Rico is not a crime. It is a category. What uh, is no. the it's category crime. of crimes that you're then charged? You have charges. A long hundred. You have charges. Yeah. Sir, please the name, name. Zach statute sir, under Rico. Yes. Oh, well, it's funny in this committee room. Everyone's not here. There's over eight. All right, sir. I reclaim my lawyers time. that I went to law school. I I'll leave it up. Ryan, it probably does not come as any surprise that a bartender who used to serve drinks is now a representative trying to serve catchy sound bites without anything actually substantive or uh, with meat on the bones here. I mean, you watch a video like that, right? And she is cutting him off, trying to twist his words, and then also just not giving him the chance to really actually lay out what the issue is and what the crime was regarding the Bidens. And yet, if this was a reversal, right, if this was Trump under testimony, um, where there wasn't actually any RICO, such as the, uh, the um, Georgia case, which, by the way, RICO is racketeering, if that needs to be explained, which... Bob Alinsky calls out AOC of not truly understanding during that whole exchange, as you just watched. <laughs> like, does that just not infuriate you that we have a representative there who is just basically trying to hush under the rug anything substantial coming out of Bob Alinsky's mouth? Uh, I mean, what do you expect from a Democrat, first off? And, um, you know, that's that's just their their playbook. They will sit there because they know what he's going to say is right. And they know what he's going to say is going to be clear, coherent, and it's going to make a whole lot of sense. So they just sit up there and they just keep shooting back, cutting off, trying to drown out the message. It's a classic liberal playbook in that situation. 
you know, their playbook, it's just gross. It, it, it's gross. And, uh, you know, we, we know how AOC is. I mean, she's been in office now for a few years, but I must say the last few months, I mean, there was a viral video where she gets confronted by a pro-Palestinian uh, activist. I mean, she can't win. She really can't win. She's got a district that has homeless and migrants flooding the streets and she can't get it under control. She can't please anyone on any political aisle. And then she has a moment like this where it just makes her look, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, you have to admit, just awful and unintelligent. I don't understand how she's getting reelected, uh, so to say, in, into this position or why she is on the House Oversight Committee in the first place. Uh, when she can't really understand the the outlines with Rico. But I think more importantly, I always say they're running cover here, and DML actually said a few episodes, there's so many things you could probably get Joe Biden on that doesn't have to be the Hunter Biden business dealings. And yet, here we are having a former business associate. This isn't some, I'll just use the term here, rando, right? This is a man who worked extensively with the Biden family for years, telling them, hey, this is what I witnessed. Here is the actual written evidence of what happened. These guys committed crimes. This is a crime. The same stuff you're going after his opponent for, here's like actual more visual substantial proof. And then you have the AOCs and Democrats alike just, like I said, turning a blind eye or literally just almost going blind to it. So um, it's not shocking to me at all that that was AOC's rhetoric. Um, Democrats really just are not uh, playing with the full deck. That could probably be translated into Democrat cities too, because I think one of the most concerning things I have seen going on uh, these last few, actually really last few years, but definitely more so in the last few weeks, um, are these squatter stories. And I know Ryan's got a clip here. Uh, we talked about uh, Adele Andalaro, she was a New York uh, City, is a New York City resident. Um, she was given a $1 million home from her parents after their passing, and she lost it to squatters because there was a guy in there uh, who sat there for 30 plus days and under New York squatter laws, once you pass that 30 day mark, you can't get kicked out. And that's just not New York. I mean, we got a case here in Seattle um, just to preface it. His name is Kang Sim. He's a Korean American, and he is pissing off people in a Seattle neighborhood. Uh, he decided to overstay his. Um, he attempted to overstay his uh, rental uh, lease in a uh, Seattle home, and decided he's not going to move out or pay the rent. And based on Seattle squatter laws, he is just literally being permitted to stay there. So I'm going to have Ryan play the clip for you explaining the situation. Get out. It's my house. Just pay the rent to the guy. I'm going to. And I'm making, I'm, you know, he doesn't understand this, you know, system here in state. Get out, come in. Get out, come in. Get out, come in. How is the Korean community interpreting what's happening here? They are not aware of this. They're usually a landlord or hardworking business people. They would never imagine a Korean descendant taking advantage of this poor, broken system like this and embarrassed, not, his, not only his family, but entire community. So I was chanting, if you're not going to pay, you shouldn't stay there. And I also called them out as a con man. Sagikun. Sagikun means con man in Korean. What this is going to do is I'm going to provide high resolution picture of them and ask all the Korean medias to post this on their newsletter and um, uh, uh, online website and actually have him get famous. Every restaurant he goes, every uh, Korean restaurant he goes, every Korean market he goes, so everybody recognizes him. That way, he's not only just embarrassed to move out of that place, but move out of the state once and for all. Yeah, I would be pissed off too. I, the, the concept that these blue cities and states are taking where you could be a legal homeowner, you're paying a mortgage or you're paying a, a um, your taxes to your your actual home property, uh, you're covering all the expenses that go with it. Like you are an owner, and yet our state or city laws, depending on where you are, Seattle or New York, are going to be designed to always favor the um, the slacker. I, I you know the squatter is going to become a term that's going to be very uh, twisted, definitely by the leftist side. 
But basically, these are slackers. They're people who are not looking to pay rent or contribute, and they're making it tough on the homeowner by just not negotiating. And, and, and the fact that, like I mentioned, the Adele lady from New York, she gets arrested, and then you have this guy here. I mean, he's a Sikh American, and you know he, he is in a wealthy neighborhood, a very safe neighborhood, and this whole community is just fed up because what the heck? Kang Sim is just sitting in there, uh, you know, not, not uh, I'm sorry, Sang Kim is just sitting in there, not participating or uh, taking any responsibility for squatting. It's, it's very disturbing that this is going to somehow become the new normal in a lot of the blue states. I mean, I don't think we have to worry about that here in Florida, Ryan. I mean, uh, I know DeSantis had made a statement recently, Governor DeSantis had made a statement recently uh, saying that we will not be bending to um, any form of squatter rights. We even ran a poll on the Team DML site regarding uh, should squatters have rights, and it has to be probably the most one-sided answer to a poll yet. I mean, we almost have 100%. It was like 99.98% saying, no, they don't have rights. Like, why, why would they be able to have rights? Um, but I think what really draws in a concerning issue here is that this was an American that did that right. But what's going to start happening with this flood of illegal immigrants and migrants coming over? We've been talking it extensively here on the program, and we're not loaded up with as many illegal immigration stories today. But there is a video I do want to play. It's a uh, Venezuelan migrant uh, TikToker, and the original video is in Spanish, but this version we're going to play uh, is translated to English. And this TikToker, um, one, you'll see in the video if you're watching, uh, he looks very manic. Uh, one of the telltale signs is usually blinking. Uh, people who are sometimes exhibitive of uh, psychotic behavior uh, don't very don't very much blink often. Um, uh, blinking is a very emotional tact within the human uh, response system. And this man, I think, blinks once in the entire two-minute video. So that's just something to note. But this man basically is making a call to action to all migrants, saying that based on these very lenient liberal laws, you can go right into a home, become a squatter, and take it over. And he even says in the video he knows a few African migrants who he calls friends, that have already done it to a few abandoned homes. So this is kind of setting a precedent here of home ownership is just going to be going into the toilet. So, uh, Ryan, I'm going to have you play that cl uh, clip real quick. So this illegal from TikTok is back, spreading a message that you guys won't believe. Now, he's speaking in Spanish like this. Y creo que ese será. So I'm going to read the subtitles for you. Let's get right to the video. My people have thought about invading a house in the United States because I learned that there is a law that says that if a house is not inhabited, we can expropriate it. Northern hoods here in the United States. Terrain deformation also applies. And I think that will be my next business. Invade abandoned houses. Since I have searched for some codes with my African friends and they told me that they already have about seven expropriated houses. And as the saying daddy says, you have to look for the way back and forth right now is to invade houses since we are in a street situation and it is the only way we have to avoid living on the street and not be a public burden. So y'all heard that, right? So your man right here that has over 300,000 TikTok followers told his compadres, his amigos, hey, if you see an empty house or a building, just go inside of it and stay in there. That's U.S. law is what he told them. So expect to see a lot more of that happening. Expect to also, at some point in the very near future, expect to see illegals trying to kick in your door and take your money, your food, your water, and rob you, you know? That's coming. Ryan, when you see a video like that, right? I mean, you got our, the, the Korean-American in the first one, American citizen, takes over the home of a, of a neighborhood and 
doesn't care that he looks like a bum. He's just saying, hey, this is me. I'm going to squat here. Seattle permits it. And then you get a Venezuelan migrant coming over and saying, not only are we the quote unquote newcomers, as the Biden administration likes to call them, but we're going to become unofficial quote unquote homeowners by taking advantage of these squatter laws. Are, are we seeing the end to home ownership as we know it? I wouldn't say the end of home ownership, but you know, I bet you people in those states or cities aren't going to rent now. They're not going to trust anyone moving into their property. Um, I I didn't know the squad like squatter laws. Like I know it differentiates from state to state and city from city, but I didn't know that there's certain laws like the one in New York or Seattle where you know the squatter like gets rights after an amount of time. You should be able to leave your house for longer than thirty days and you know not get your house taken over and have to go to court. It should be pretty simple. Here's the deed. I own it. But I, I don't. I'd say that I think that was my biggest shock when I saw that video and then have been seeing that squatting has been on the rise is that some of these, you know, squatters are like actually really protected under the law. It makes it really difficult. I'm just kind of like, who, like, who's the ass that put that, put those laws into place? It just, I don't understand it. It's kind of backwards to me. Well, an ass is a donkey and a donkey is a Democrat, right? So maybe that's why they chose that animal as their political icon. To your point, you know, if you own a home or some kind of property in one of those states, you now have to run the risk of someone overstaying, especially like New York with a 30-day um, mandatory uh, squatter effect there. I, I Just as an example, right? Like uh, we had a home back in New York that we had attempted for a few weeks on end to rent it out. And we just realized it's just too much to try and do the New York, Florida thing. But what if we had that home now and we were interested in trying to do, whether it's Airbnb, VRBO, some kind of rental opportunity or program. Well, now we have to run the risk of that if that person, you know, let's say they have a 28 um, stay, but then decide to maybe go two days after and we just don't catch it on time, are we going to just lose our home? Is that is that going to be the new normal that's going to start its spread? I mean, like I said earlier, I'm Hoping Florida never changes on that perspective as well as other red states. But my advice, if it's not already as telltale of a sign as it is, if you own a home or property or some kind of building in, in any of these states, they're not looking out for you. I mean, Trump Tower might be seized in a few days by Letitia James. You know, so to, to own, I mean, safety is one thing in the blue states, but now just your 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 property ownership or if you're developing a property, you may want to just go sell it off. It may not be worth the absolute headache that someone like uh, Adele Andalaro or the the man from Seattle are dealing with. Um, and, and you know, before we uh, make our break here, definitely tune in tomorrow for tomorrow's podcast. Uh, there's no wine to talk this week, but for tomorrow, we actually have a great interview regarding uh, property and land ownership, specifically with a landmark U.S. case. Uh, that happened over in Nevada. Uh, DML uh, is conduct or conducted the interview uh, with Miss Margaret Byfield, and she's going to share some really troubling details uh, regarding the, <laughs> let's just say, the battle to just be a private landowner when it comes to fighting the federal government for your rights to own land. Uh, it's definitely going to be an interview you're not going to want to miss. So definitely tune in tomorrow for that. But before we get into our crazier stories here, because uh, we got some stories that just can't be discussed here on Facebook, uh, this is where we're going to break. And I just want to recommend that if you want to see the rest of it, you really should join Team DML. It's worth your time. Like I said, dml.com slash join. You'll get the fi uh, full video there where you can watch me and Ryan and obviously DML uh, talk about the stories that Facebook would probably just put a strike through because their algorithm would detect it. So I want to thank you though, that if you are just watching through the Facebook means, thanks for joining. And uh, this is where we say goodbye. Get the Dennis Michael Lynch podcast every day by subscribing on Apple podcasts or Spotify and download the DML news app from the Google play store or the Apple app store for breaking news, merchandise, films, exclusive content, and team DML.